All right, so before we do this, this orange juice is real orange juice, uh, which means it has a lot of bulb. Um, because I squeezed it from our own oranges, which probably should have videotaped, but I didn't. Um, but I don't want pulp in my soap. I don't think it'll look very nice. So I'm just straining out the juice and the pulp will not go in. And just like the lye solution, I'm doing this because I don't want debris in the soap itself when I'm done. So, yep, it's all just juice now. Hi everyone, so welcome back. We are doing something kind of cool today. It's the first time using my new workshop heritage this is the triple tall and skinny from them um, which is brand brand new i have just put a couple bars of soap in it to measure uh, where my loaves will be and so that's what we're going to be using today we're also doing something a little different we are using real orange juice um, which you saw at the beginning of the video or probably just before this um, this is actually from our orange tree. We have one, it's a little gimpy, so we don't have a whole bunch of orange juice, but this is real orange juice from my orange tree um, that's been strained, so there's no pulp. Um, this is our titanium dioxide with Eye of the Tiger and Atomic Orange. Um, and then this is our lye, silk, sugar, and sodium lactate. And then this is our goat's milk. And then this is our monstrous amount of fragrance. I'm using a blend today um, of uh, Brambleberry 10X Orange and then Brambleberry Orange Peel. So that's what all that goodness is there. And we, of course, have our soap dough oranges. So let's, let's make some soap. All right, so let's get this out of the way for a second. Now that mold only actually makes 13 or 12, 11, 12, 11, 11 pounds, 11 pounds. And this batch, I actually had been a little bit lazy and I'm trying to get a couple batches in one here. So what we've got is almost 14 pounds of total soap being made. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split off some of this and make some other little soaps with it. And then I'm going to split off a even smaller amount and that's actually gonna be used for um, part of my soap challenge soaps. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this blended up. Now I got the idea to get this big shallow um, container from Ophelia. Um, and if you don't follow her, I'm sorry for you because she's incredible and amazing and makes this look so easy. Um, she actually kind of stressed me out a little bit because uh, when I posted my new workshop heritage molds, which I found thanks to her, um, she, she made a comment about the 32 pound one being kind of big and she wasn't sure if she could do that. And I was thinking to myself, oh God, like... <laughs> She doesn't think she can do that. What am I doing? But um, she's amazing and I love her. So I learned to get these from her. So if you've never added fruit juice to your lye solution before, it looks a little funky. So don't freak out when it looks weird in a second here. Okay. I'm gonna do our milk first. And this is the first video you've seen me do. Um, that's goat milk, that's from our own goats. Just a couple little buzzes here. And all I basically do is just add this in 
it usually behaves pretty decently. I've done this on smaller batches. I've never done it on one this big before. So hopefully, hopefully it behaves because I'm filming this and I would be super sad if it started to really misbehave in front of everybody. Sorry, that's a little noisy. It's my first time using this big round one before. So I'm not sure where all the edges are just yet. So with a, a batter this size, you really want to make sure that you've mixed to, at the very least, emulsion. Um, I actually wouldn't mind getting this almost to thin trace because I'm just a little worried with it being so big that I don't have pieces mixed in. I don't know what that little... Are you? Oh, this is a little piece of black soap. <sighs> I run my stick blender through the uh, through the washing machine, but that doesn't always mean that it gets everything off. So before I add my fragrance and before I add the color, because this is a single color soap, I'm going to go ahead now and split off a little bit of soap um, because what I'm doing later on, I don't necessarily want it colored. So, go ahead and ladle in a little bit of soap into here. Pretty sure this is Mr. Cheeky's ladle, so nobody rat me out. So I kind of stole it from him. It's been used in soap, so it's mine now, right? That's how that works. So we're just gonna leave that off to the side. And then the rest of this, we're gonna go ahead and scent and color. So if you've never used orange essential oil blends before or orange peel from Brambleberry. It behaves really well. It's a nice blend. It does tend to turn a little orangey. So that's, that's to be expected um, because the orange essential oil has kind of a light color to it. Um, but I wanted this to be a little bit more creamsicle-y so I'm just gonna make sure this gets nicely blended in. Oh, it smells so good. I can't even begin to tell you. It's actually making me a little thirsty. It smells like a fresh glass of orange juice, which is exactly what I want. So now let's go ahead and add our color in. So I Debated trying to leave this a little bit more white and cream. And I might, might lighten this up a little bit with some more titanium dioxide. We'll see, we'll see how this blends. Cause I want our oranges to be seen. The nice thing about working with this much soap is it actually takes it a longer time to start firming up. So that makes it that makes it kind of nice. You can kind of play with it a little bit. And I definitely do see some little bits of not totally put in mica here. So I think we're gonna add a little bit of titanium dioxide and we're gonna blend that up just a little bit here. just on its own, doesn't it? So it's just titanium dioxide and olive oil. Uh, if you don't use a lot of titanium dioxide, that probably won't work for you. But I do, I use lots of it. And my friend Lisa, who you hear me talking about quite a bit on here, um, actually taught me a really great way to kind of 
blend your titanium dioxide. So it just blends in and you don't get those little streaky streaks because no one likes streaky streaks. So all I'm doing now is just trying to get all those little bits of mica that I see. I don't like spots. Spots are not fun. We don't like spots. actually starting to come to a thin trace which isn't bad now do I like that orange with this orange do I feel like that's gonna get eaten let's see on the camera this is a little more yellow all right hold on oh I forgot to hit the button again just added a little bit more titanium dioxide just to bring that up just a little bit more Again, I don't really mind if this gets thicker because I'm just putting it into a mold. I'm not trying to go for a design. So some of the things that normally would stress me out about not getting my color exactly right, I don't really mind as much. Yeah, that's better. See, now you can see that better. are you oh that is a sparkle bless america it's the only problem when you start using glitter is it infects the studio and now everything is covered in glitter which i mean i don't totally hate probably should not like it that much but i really don't mind so all right so now let's pour some soap in the mold So I want these oranges to be decently dispersed. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit and add some oranges in. And you can see I have my molds marked off. So I know roughly where they're gonna be. I am gonna try to keep these from shifting too much. If you've watched my other videos, you know that sometimes my fruit tends to go to the side and I don't like that. I want it to be where I put it, darn it. So, but that's, that can be a little harder. Oh, this is really big. I'm gonna do this. All right, let's just do this. So you can see as I pour it in, they kind of move to the outside, which is fine. That is why God gave us tongs. You just have to remember where you wanted to put things. Otherwise, when you go to move it around again, it won't be where you left it. Which this probably isn't the most entertaining to watch because it's kind of, you know, soap making by Braille. <laughs> but it does work. You just have to kind of stick it out. And these little fruits are super cute, but the nice thing with them is that they, it's kind of random. I don't, I don't really plan where I'm gonna put them. And so if it's not exactly what I thought it was gonna be, I'm not super mad about it because it's, you know, it's cutesy, it's artsy. It's not, it's not gonna be exactly what I want. What I don't want though, I can feel these two here. So I don't want them to just all be on the sides. I want some in the middle. I want some on the side here. This probably looks really weird. I'm gonna laugh at this video later. But I want everyone to get 
you know, some oranges in their, in their soap. I want you to cut into that bar of soap and, and be excited that you, that you got a bunch of little oranges in it. So let's do the final layer here. I'll try to be a little bit more careful so I don't have to do as much surgery. You can see them shifting a little bit there. That's okay. I'll put them back. Tuck these puppies in. Again, I don't want them. Good. And you guys thought I made messes before. Look at this mess. All right, good. So I'm gonna let this scooch off to the side for a second. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna get the molds ready for the rest of this and I'll be back. Okay, and we're back. And if you have seen these videos before, you know what's going to happen. I am basically going to go ahead and put a million little oranges, orange slices, on the soap. So I will go ahead and put a couple of these on so you can see how cute they are in real time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up because nobody needs to watch me do this for, I don't know, the year it's gonna take me to do this. 